year is this? Like 2014? Yeah. Against, no Deathrite Shaman? Yeah, against the Grixis Delver. That does have Deathrite no Shaman. No Wastelands. Oh, I got four over here. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Brad Carpenter knows. He knows what it's all about. These players will shake hands, and we're going to get ready to watch Brad Carpenter against Nick Rainey. It's Grixis Delver, that's for Stoneblade. And it's a Tundra to start things off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now it's a flooded strand. Different land this time. He's learned his lesson. Kataxian Pro up here from Carpenter. Umazawa Jite, Stoneforge Mystic. Brainstorm, True Name Nemesis, Underground Sea there for Nick. Carpenter's going to write those cards down. Brad Carpenter, a former competitor in our Players' Championship, has destroyed many a standard classic. Yes. That's for sure. I felt like every open I covered when we were working ourselves into day two, Brad would just stroll right on by the booth with another plaque from another standard classic. And he's had plenty of success in opens as well as he picks up a daze off of the Gataxian Probe. There's a Volcanic Island. Here's a Delver of Secrets. Underground Sea, Thought Seas. Good draw step here. Didn't really want to tap out for a two just yet. Yeah, we're going to see two dazes, a Brainstorm, two Polluted Deltas, and a Young Pyromancer. I mean, I'm guessing here you take the Young Pyromancer and just play through the soft counters the Brainstorm. I don't think you're going to take Young Pyromancer. Not a real answer to the threat, it appears. And Delver flips. We got ourselves a maybe a short game. Or I if he finds a Wasteland. Yeah, that too. That too. We could see uh, Carpenter try to guarantee Delver flipping here with a main phase brain. Excuse me, an upkeep Brainstorm with Delver on the stack. And that's actually what I think we're going to see. So here's a Brainstorm. One is a wasteland. Yes. Two is a daze. Yes, those are a combo together. <laughs> Three is a ponder. <laughs> Carpenter going to put some number of dazes back, I'm sure. Well, he might want to get rid of the extra land here because he's a little bit heavy. There is daze. Well, he might want a wasteland just right now, and then he picks up the land, you know. In there for three. Whatever. Yep. We'll find out. Bang. Mm. Yep. Mm. You know, you could you, you could have been doing this to people at that team open. Oh yeah, I, I've I've played a little bit of Delver in Legacy. You could be the Grixis uh, Grixis uh, Grixis Delver guy. Yeah, see, you know, and then you have Rainy here looking at the cards in his hand, <laughs> flipping them around a little bit, trying to see if he can cast any of them. He cannot. <laughs> and been, yeah. oh no, no, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. That's getting dazed. <laughs> I'd daze the living heck out of that thing. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have anything else to do with your mana, yeah. then why not? I, mean, I suppose he could brainstorm lock himself, but why even let it resolve? You know his hand. Yeah, get that weak stuff out of here. It's looking good. It's, it's not looking bad for Brad Carpenter. He'll draw a card here. Picked up a polluted delta. He'll play Volcanic Island. Now it's time for a ponder. Top three. He doesn't know these cards. Pluto Delta is one. Fork Bolt is two. Brainstorm is three. Question is, does he want that Brainstorm? The answer is yes. In for three. Yeah, as long as he can. He doesn't mind drawing the Fork Bolt because he knows about the Stoneforge Mystic. Mm -hmm. And then he can shuffle away the dead draw. So. And Rainy got to pass the turn back. <laughs> That's how it was meant to be played. <laughs> That's how the game was meant to be played. You don't get to have any fun. You don't know what this guy will do with mana? Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's a brainstorm. He, he can do anything, you know. Delta, Underground Sea, Misty Rainforest. Flooding out a little bit is Carpenter. How are these daces are hard counters right now? Right. In for three. And Carpenter will pass the turn back. Rainy will draw. Hey, Polluted Delta lucky. right off the top. <laughs> yeah. The luckiest. That is lucky. There's a the Tundra. That's, that's, that's not resolving. Let's not play pretend here. That's not resolving. Days is going to take care of that. Are we forcing? Force move Trinity Nemesis. Got to try to resolve something. You do. It doesn't look good. I'm but. not arguing with you. Trust me. I 
And you know it's kind of free to do it because the Trunay Nemesis requires mana. Mm -hmm. Terrainy does not have. <laughs> Will Carpenter counter this with days as well as the question? Well, the question is, how much does this Stoneforge Mystic actually matter? Mm -hmm. Because if you assume he's getting a Battered Skull, you know he has the Jute, then it's a turn for him to deploy it. And by that point, your Insect Aberration has, has killed him. So on the surface, who cares? I think the risk is if he drew something like Swords to Plowshares, now you're just in a lot of trouble. It gets harder. There's days. And the days doesn't protect you against a source of plowshares off the top, so this is your chance to cover against that. Correct. Now with Rainy at six, going down to three here for Fork Bolt in hand. You now you think to yourself, he's sacrificing another fetch land, the game's basically over. Some couple, a couple different thoughts. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah! You know what it covers against source of plowshares? <laughs> Wasteland! <laughs> Bang! <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Playing around everything! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Pick up your land and go <laughs> home. <laughs> Brad Carpenter going to win oh. game number one here over, oh, yeah. over Nick Rainey. That's the stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's been too long. Grixis Delver. This is the stuff. Of a game here over Esper Stoneblade is not one, not two, but three wastelands will get the job done. These players are going to get ready here for game number two. But while we wait, a quick message from our wasteland sponsors. Welcome back, everybody. StarCityGames.com Wasteland Open Weekend. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan here in the booth. Brad Carpenter with three Wastelands in game number one, making things look very easy against Nick Rainey. These players getting ready to take a look at their opening hand, I believe. I'd be giving the green light here in a second. Quick sideboards here. See for Rainey, three Fluster Storm, two Containment Priest, two Surgical Extraction, two Zealous Persecution, Disenchant, Engineer Explosives, Fatal Push, Force of Will. Pithy Needle, Sword of Feast and Famine. The big ones to me are the explosives and the push. You need some more cheap interaction. Um, there's not a particularly valuable card to Fluster Storm, but if he just, again, wants more cheap interaction in the deck, those are fine. Other side of things here for Carpenter. Three Cabal Therapy, two Ancient Grudge, two Diabolic Idiot, two Pyroblast, two Surgical Extraction, and Pithy Needle. Dismember, is it Staticaster and a Grim Lava Mancer? I like the copy of Grim Lava Mancer in this matchup, the two copies of Ancient Grudge to cover against equipment, and I don't mind having the Pyroblast too. 
Those are the options there for both players. We're going to give them the green light here now to get ready to go. Watch game number two of Wasteland City. Everybody's favorite. Or perhaps Nick Rainey, especially because he's on the play, do a little bit more this game. We'll see. He was on the play that game, too. That's actually true. Yeah. That's actually true. You're right about that. That's my bad. Didn't feel like it, that's for sure. You'll also note on our scoreboard there, Andrew Jessup currently up a game with the Grixis Death Shadow over James Miller playing Scape Shift. Taxing Probe is where Brad Carpenter is going to start this time. I see a hand with a lot of lands. That'll play around Wasteland, along with Trinity Nemesis, Vendillion Click, and Source of Plowshares. It's a great looking hand here for Rainey as he can leave the Marsh Flats up, play an island on turn two. The Marsh Flats can go get a Plains if he needs to cast Source of Plowshares. And then he has a Wasteland proof path to Trinity Nemesis and Vendillion Click. There you go. We're going to go over to Carpenter still for his first turn. Hasn't played a land yet. Just got a little look at things. There's Volcanic Island, maybe. Nope, just kidding. All right, Pluto Delta, pass the turn back. Worth noting that Rainey in game number one discarded that true name Nemesis to a Force of Will, and Brad Carpenter has brought in his copies of Diabolic Edict. Picked up a little bit of information there. Ooh, Cabal Therapy with Cataxium Probe. It's combo. It's combo, because you know. Mm hmm it's not so random, is it? No. There's Volcanic Island. Carpenter will pass the turn back. We'll go over to Rainy now. I'm guessing the line here from Carpenter to try to set up one turn of Young Power Mancer back with Cabal Therapy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, do the thing. There's Misty Rainforest. It's complicated a little bit by the fact that Vendillion Click is in Rainy's hand, but this is still probably going to be very good. Mm -hmm. And he wants to wait to be able to set up multiple spells in the same action because he knows about sorts of plowshares. So he wants to squeeze out as much from the Young Power Mancer as possible. Well, two undergrounds and a volcanic. That's Carpenter's mana base right now. He's getting it all set up here. Young Pyromancer. That gives a thumbs up. Cabal Therapy, Young Pyromancer trigger, make an elemental. The response here from Rainy looks like a source of plowshares. Yes, that's going to go after the Young Pyromancer. Delver of Secrets in Carpenter's hand, along with the Force of Will, the Di Diabolic Edict, the Wasteland. That looks like a Verdant Catacombs. Here is Force of Will. So Carpenter wants to keep that Young Pyromancer. That'll bring along another elemental token. Rainy might be fighting back. Here's a brainstorm in response. This will allow Nick to potentially hide some cards. Fatal Push, Brainstorm, and Underground see the cards that are drawn. Two cards will be going back here in just a moment, and Rainey even has a fetch line to go along with it. So imagine if you can't fight any more over this Cabal Therapy that you just put the click and the, the true name back and make Carpenter guess in the dark. See exactly what Rainy does want to put back on top of that. Remember, it's been a it's been a minute since we watched a brainstorm resolve. It's not exactly easy. No, especially when your opponent knows about some of your hand, and they're cabal therapying you, and you may or may not want to shuffle away. All right, Brainstorm's unresolving. That'll happen. Force will counter swords, elementals, elemental, therapy. Name that tune. Hit with Vendillion Click, Snapcaster Mage, Brainstorm. Delta, Underground Sea. There we go. 
Does he want a flashback therapy now? I think so. So we'll get another elemental token, of course. Great synergy. So I think, I think you just named Snapcaster. Uh, if Rainy's letting this resolve, sure. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, expecting to see the brainstorm here. But it looks like Rainy's just letting it resolve. I'm not entirely sure this is good news for Carpenter, though, because Rainy's going to draw his card, which should be true name. Maybe. Okay, push. Yeah, but uh, Carpenter's sitting on Diabolic Edict, so he doesn't yeah, really yeah, care yeah, that okay. much. That's true. That's true. Push will take care of Pyromancer. Let's go back over to Carpenter now. <laughs> Good draw. Oh, yeah. In for two. Get that Tundra. Yep. Oh, you're looking at you're looking to wasteland him, huh? Here's young Pyromancer. Brainstorm looks like it's gonna be played in response. True name, ponder, brutality. Pretty good cards. Brutality's not bad. That uh, that could allow him to answer the young pyromancer and clear a path for the true name nemesis. Yeah. He's concerned about Diabolic Edict. Makes you wonder if Diabolic Edict's on the radar here for Nick. Well, Rainey had multiple spots to try to stick the true name nemesis. Uh, he hasn't in spots where days could have been the concern, but. There's Wasteland. Oh, come on with that. Uh, the waiting? You don't like the waiting, I see. I don't. Here comes Collective Brew Brew, perhaps. Yep. There goes Young Pyromancer. True name's the last card in hand. The question is, is Rainy going to play it now, or is he going to wait? So if Carpenter didn't wasteland you, I'm not buying that Daze is in his hand. Yeah, OK. Like, well, you know, the. What's the, what's his hand look like where that's the line? Mm -hmm. I don't buy it. You might want to hold it for other reasons. Uh, I, I wouldn't because next turn, you know, Carpenter on taps, Pyroblast is only a consideration. But if I get dazed here, good you know, good, good for Carpenter. Yep. Uh, you know, I suppose he tricked me and knew that he, I was going to play land number five and a two mana spell and then try to cast my true day deficits. Yeah, in legacy. What a master. Yeah, a two mana spell and a three mana yeah, spell. I don't buy yeah. it. And it's not like the spot gets better. Well, it looks like Ring is going to go for it. He's going to sacrifice and, two fetches. And in fact, if Carpenter plays a land there and doesn't wasteland, the card that I would most assume in his hand is Force of Will, that he's trying to get to a spot to hard cast it. Yeah. Land Force of Will explains not wastelanding here. Yeah. Days just doesn't. I, I can't. I can't come up with a narrative that explains that. Well, here comes True Name. That's going to resolve. And Carpenter is at the ready with the Diabolic Edicts. Rainy with no cards in hand. Edict will take care of the True Name Nemesis. So we're going to head back over to Carpenter now, who will draw a card. Picked up a copy of Days. Uh, what are we thinking here? Underground C? All right, see you later. In for two. Air on the side of cutting off uh, the blue mana and, you know, double black, I guess, could come up. There's Blue to Delta pass the turn back. A little surprised to see that get played right away. Yeah, I don't know exactly what he's playing around there. Maybe is it Lilian of the Veil? Uh, I don't know. But probably low on the amount of harm it creates. In for two comes Carpenter. Pass the turn back. Rainy will draw. And pass. Back over to Carpenter with those two elemental tokens, Lightning Bolt to draw now. That's from Dylan Donegan who won that Invitational a couple of years ago. Here's Snapcaster Mage. Mm. Got an update for you in standard as Nick Rainey sacrificing a fetch line here. Autry Ward with Grixis Control up a game over Danny Jessup playing Sultai Energy. Keep our eyes on the other two matches, which we should have some time to jump to at least one. As somehow our legacy match is actually going the fastest right now. Fatal push. 
Yeah, I assume that Snapcaster, he would want to get a, uh, a cantrip back, but he might feel like he's really favored in a long game. And if he keeps the light total high, he's just drawing much better. Oof, Gataxian Probe shows a Fluster Storm. Draw card. Brainstorm the draw there for Carpenter. He'll pass, no rush. Over Nick. He'll just simply pass. Back to Brad. Misty Rainforest the draw. You see the lightning bolt in hand. He's going to start things up with a brainstorm, though. That's going to resolve. Three cards coming. Two will be going back. One is a Gurmag Angler. Two is a Diabolic Edict. Three is a Deathrite Shaman. His hand looks a little bit better now. This is a good deck. Well, that's a good card. James Miller tied things up against Andrew Jessup. Grix's Shadow. Scape Shift. They're going to be going to game number three. Perhaps we'll be able to jump to that one. We'll see. All right, Tropical Island. For those of you who still care, <laughs> can't wait to see what this is going to be. Fetch line cracked after Brainstorm. That's a stamp. You're still filling out your bingo board even though you've already lost? Yep. Okay. Okay. I expect that. You know, if you get a bingo, you're kind of playing on hard mode today anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll count that bingo. Count that. Real big fish. Selling out by Delvin Six. Is that a real big fish reference? Yeah, that's okay. exactly what it is. Great band. Hello, Council's Judgment. Timely top deck. Brad knows about uh, Brad. <laughs> Brad knows about uh, Flusterstorm, so take care of that. Deathrite Shaman's on the battlefield, though, and that can finish things off all by itself because it's a great magic card. Delver Secret's the draw. Carpenter going to use his Underground C to cast that 1-1. One, one. Could become a 3-2 flyer at any moment here. Basically needs just one untap from here. And Pretty much. Door should be shut. Here's Brainstorm, timely. Perhaps this will get Rainy back into the game. One, two is a stone forge. Three is an engineer explosive. There's the prize. Okay, we got ourselves a game now. That I think. was the draw. Stone forge along with engineer explosive is just about perfect here. Mm -hmm. The explosive cleans up the board, Three. and then the stone forge. Even if that dies, you have enough mana to go just go get a batter skull. I don't know if I like playing the angler first here. Because if you want to play explosives and, and activate it, that daze is online now. That daze is online now. I think you want to just, the explosives is so important here that that would just be my first order of business. And there's a real shot that Carpenter does daze this now. Oh, oh for sure. Yeah. It's kind of free to daze. This daze is not getting any better. Yeah. <laughs> he sees that right away. He will daze. By all means, pay the one. You need to have a land now. Yeah, I think that, that, that trip up there might get Rainy killed. Because mm -hmm. Carpenter's going to bring him down to seven. I mean, if this Delver flips, it's, it's game over, five right? Five points of damage, yeah. yeah. Checking with Delver. Flipping with Delver. I think we're done. Yeah. Yeah, with, in combination, the Delver hit brings him to four. Death Rite brings him to two. Bolt brings him to negative one. Everything matters in Legacy. And he knows about the Fluster Storm, so you just cast the Bolt first. Which he's going to do. And that, you can, you, can, you can cast that all you want. But he'll be able to pay and finish him off the Death Rite. So Brad Carpenter is going to win this game and match over Nick Rainey. Two games to zero. Grixis Delver going to take care of Esper Stoneblade. And that means Bradley Carpenter has put his team up a match. Carpenter, Jessup, and Jessup. They're one of our two undefeated teams right now in this tournament. Yeah. Just a, I, I think that Rainey's brainstorm there yielded a tools. I don't know if he necessarily wins, but really to pull back in the game, that, that sequencing there uh, just wasn't perfect. And in Legacy, sometimes that's the whole margin. We're going to prepare for some modern magic here between Andrew Jessup and James Miller. Hopefully we can get into this match, watch Grix's Shadow and Scape Shift, get our left holes updated, and you see Andrew Jessup there in the middle on the left. James Miller 
in the middle on the right. Getting ready for game three, and I think we'll even have some time to jump to standard two between Danny Jessup and Autry Ward. Get a look at all three matches maybe this round. As here's an inquisition of Kozlek. Show to hand with scape shift. Shelter thicket, mountain, verdant catacombs, wooded foothills. Not much else for yep. our scape shift player. Hey, with. There's an island for Jessup. And now there's the clock. Gurmag Gangler. So for James Miller, you better peel a ramp spell like right now. Prince Macklin would not be shabby either. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. May cut off a whole turn. Miller going to sacrifice a wood of foothills, fall down to 19. Doesn't change the clock any, at least right now. Still a four turn clock via the real big fish. Don't have a great look at Jessup's hand. Obviously, a card like Stubborn Isle would be fantastic right now for Jessup if he has one. And as we make our way through this game, we'll find out soon enough as James Miller is going to cycle a shelter thicket. So we'll get to see two new cards as he works into his next main phase. Did yes. he draw from the cycling? I don't think that he did. Yeah, we have to stop the game here. I don't think he drew from cycling, but he might be too late now. I don't think he did. And you can't forget to draw for your turn. Yeah, you can't forget that. And he did just announce cycling. Yeah. You kind of had to resolve it. Yep. All right, he says he did. Okay. Fair, I mean, not one to argue. Was that stubborn or not? Is that just a face-up stubborn now for fun? Oh, it's in the graveyard. Never yeah. mind. I'm like, huh. It's very unlike Andrew. Oh, nice. What is that? Cinder Glade. Wow. Is that an expedition? Yes. Okay. Is that on your thing? No. Invention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, inventions. Oh, inventions doable. It's the invocations that aren't doable. Right. No one plays with those. Blood Moon and Damnation, I think, are the ones I've seen. Yeah. There's a mountain. What's this? I wouldn't cast Scape Shift right now. It doesn't seem great. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, Bailoff's not bad. That's a little roadblock. So does that actually get him another turn here? Should. I yeah. guess between a chump block and saving four. Yeah. yeah, 17, fall down to 12, 12 to 2, 2 to negative a bunch. Yeah, got a snap block. Yeah, I mean, you're not, this battle isn't doing anything other than saving the points, so. Yep. There we go. Down to 12. Big follow up. Thoughtsies, that's a good draw. That's really good draw, mm, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on time. Jessup's got a fade, though. Oh, oh. Uh, Miller has some big draws. Yeah. Land six plus two mana ramp spell or search tomorrow. Two mana ramp spell or search tomorrow means that, uh, that Jessup dies unless he has a counter spell in his hand. You have to take primeval, I think. Yeah. Death Shadow. Yeah, well, fade the world. Two mana ramp spell search tomorrow means the game's over. Pizzatic Omen would do it too. Yeah, he's got some big ones. Yeah. There's Wooded Foothills. Sack yep. this. But it is now or never. Yep. And this shadow is just a 2 2, so it's not even that threatening. Primeval Titan's actually a pretty good top deck, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, if Jessup can't kill it, then he's way ahead. Yeah. There's a mountain. Uh, Danny J, Autry Ward, they're all tied up. Uh oh. James does not look happy. Does he have. Is he out of mountains to search for? Or is. I hope not. I mean, this to me seems like a very on-off, like you have it or you don't. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of room to. How many mountains does he have? 
Uh, but I will go and check here. We got the glades. We Seven got basics, four stomping grounds, two cinder glades. Shuffle, Shuffle the thickets. thickets. How many thickets? One. One, he's already cycled it. So let's see, I played this deck a little while ago in Magic Online. So that's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. One, two, three, four, five. He's used six. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't actually know what's in well, his hand. I mean, if he's passing, he's dead. That's, that's true. It's a sorcery and mountain deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your old classic sorcery mountain yeah, strategy. Sorcery mountains. Yeah. Did I, I? I legit just have no idea now. If he's passing, he's not alive anymore. His opponent's touching his hand. I mean, there's. He can't scape shift from that spot. Yeah. He needs a seventh land or a prismatic omen. Yeah. So if his hand is just. If it's just the scape shift and something that doesn't add up, he's dead. Yep. There's, there's not. It's a pretty straightforward deck. It's a really straightforward deck. Yeah. It's just a, it's a numbers deck. It's not he's short of damage. He literally can't trigger Valka. Yeah. So it's. There might be a life total discrepancy. Yeah, that's going to do it. So. I want to show his hand. I, yeah, I think it was a stomping ground. I think he drew a, or what if what hills or something. I think he just drew a land. Yeah. If there's a land in his hand, nothing, nothing right, matters. It doesn't matter. Yeah, he's just dead. Okay. Well, our left holes were good. James had him incorrect. And at the end of the day, if his hand is landscape shift, which is, look, which is what it appeared to be, none of it matters. So we're all good. As Brad Carpenter, Andrew Jessup, and Danny Jessup win this match. Two matches to one to one. Because we don't know how the third one will But we go. just call it. We it's just over. call it. They There's, don't play it out. Yeah, save some mental energy, move on. And Danny's shaking his head anyway because he looks exhausted.